Okay, everyone, welcome back. We are uh, Stanzo and Bert. Um, we are here with another episode of Down the Line. Um, Nick, how you feeling? Pretty, pretty, feel- pretty good. Pretty good week for the Yankees. Would you say? Yankees had a great week. Uh, win another couple series. I mean, obviously they had the crushing loss on Thursday, which we'll get into at length. But they took another game on uh, another series on the road from a, a pretty good team in the Chicago White Sox, and. I, uh, you can't be feeling anything besides good right now if you're a Yankee fan, especially the way most of the season's gone. I mean, with the exce- I, and this is a segment I want to get into a little later, and because a lot of teams are hot right now and a lot of teams are cold. Um, but I mean, the Yankees are, uh, you know, one of the teams that are hot right now, seven and three in their last ten. You know, the Rays are up in you know in that range too. They're seven and three in their last ten too. But the Red Sox five and five, um, Blue Jays five and five too. So I mean. The Yankees have kind of solidified themselves a little bit more in third place. You know, for a while we were worried with the Blue Jays getting really hot. You know, you know the Yankees are going to have to keep up a good pace. Um, but the Red Sox cooled down. Obviously, they've had their little stretch of bad baseball. But they, they got back into it. Obviously, with Sale coming back, I expect them to kind of keep up in that second, first place, even third place, depending on how everything goes. But, I mean, it's – it's they, the Yankees are fully back in it. I don't want to say they're fully back. Cause I still don't think that there's a, I still think there's a lot of holes with this team, but I mean, they're back in the race. You know, you can't say anything else. Um, how, what, what, were, what were your thoughts after the field of dreams game? What, I mean, actually first, what were your thoughts of the field of dreams game? I thought they absolutely killed it. I, and listen, it's, you and I, we there's a segment on this show called what the fuck Rob Manfred. He's terrible at his job. It's not often where, praising him and major league baseball for a promotional job that they do. They really crushed the field of dreams game. Uh, I know last week we were talking on the episode saying how we weren't overly excited for it. So I, I watched field of dreams last Wednesday night to, to get myself pumped up a little bit uh, ahead of Thursday. And that made me a lot more excited. Just the, the field itself, uh, the two teams that they chose, it uh, wasn't always the best product of baseball throughout the entirety of the game since Andrew Heaney pitched for the Yankees. But, I mean, it, it led to action. Look, a, a 9-8 game ending in a walk-off, as frustrating as it was for a Yankee fan, you can say it was good for baseball. I did see some people, like some Yankee fans, being like, oh, well, like that sucks, but like it was good for baseball. Like, no, like that was not at all where my head was at. <laughs> but, like, now looking back that we won the series two out of three and saying, like, how was the Field of Dreams game? It was fucking awesome. It really was. I mean – if if nothing else, the clip of Tim Anderson coming around third base with the fireworks in the background, I mean, that was good enough. I mean, if, if, minus the fact that they were hitting balls into a cornfield, which is I, – I mean, it's, like, you, like we said it last week, just doing something that's different um, mm-hmm. and just I mean, gets away from the 162-game schedule where it's just like we're just watching – you know, as cool as it is, baseball is the only sport that has this, or each stadium and, and the dimensions of it are different – it still gets methodical. It still gets a little tedious. It gets, it can get boring. Um, mm-hmm. So them doing this smack in the middle of the season in what felt like an important series, just for baseball alone, um, you know, for the white Sox. I mean, they're up 10 games in the central. It doesn't, this doesn't really matter as much to them, but you know, it was important for the fact that I think the white Sox wanted to prove that they belong in the conversation at the top of the AL, considering they lost the previous series to the Yankees. Um, so, you know, so, you know, it, it meant something to both teams and obviously the Yankees need to stay up in the standings and someone as cool as Tim Anderson hitting that walk off. I'm still on the side that I saw some people were like, oh, the, the, despite the fact that you're a Yankees fan, this is cool. It's like, well, no, it still sucks. Let's, yeah, let's, let's not, let's not. Yes, it was a cool moment. I, I, I think I'm a different type of Yankees fan where I can separate myself from baseball and like the Yankees. Yes, that was a cool baseball moment, but as a Yankees fan, no, that still sucked. <laughs> yeah. The guy who paid $14 million blew a save. <laughs> like, oh, it was, it was horrible. And listen, you, like I, I was with a bunch of Yankee fans on Thursday night watching and we all, we went to the bar after and we were like talking. We we're like, yeah, like, like objectively, like that was the game of the year. Like you like yeah. six runs in the ninth off of two, you know, elite relievers or at least supposedly elite relievers yeah. you have Aaron judge Stan and Tim Anderson three of the biggest stars in the game hitting them you know stands to take the lead was fucking electric and then obviously the heartbreak of of Anderson right back but I can you can do both and separate and say that was probably the game of the year and MLB did a great job but also say that that doesn't give me any kind of you know it doesn't make me feel any better that it's like oh well at least that was good for baseball I don't give a fuck what was good for baseball. I wish the Yankees would have won that game 11-0 and everyone turned it off in the third inning. But you know what? I could step back and say 
you know what, that sucked, but it was awesome. Yeah, in hindsight, fine, you're right. That was good for baseball in the moment. I mean, I literally called it the field of nightmares. I mean, I, I, I couldn't think of a worse way to lose that game. But how, would you have rather lost that game 11 nothing, or would you have rather have lost it like that? Oh, yeah, no, 11 nothing in, right? in, yeah, in easy. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm so over these brutal defeats. Like, if they would have just gone down without a whimper, like – seventh uh what, what was in the ninth seven four yeah going into the ninth like i would have been so much happier with that because then you feel like it's a it's a game you blow because it is and like nor in any other normal season where you get like one or two of these a year i would be like you know what like it was good to see the fight and battle back i'm so fucking far past that like i don't care i would I'd rather lose by 10 than lose another one of these brutal bullpen games because we've had just about 10 of them now and i, I can't i can't do any more it, no, it, it's really gotten a little bit ridiculous. Did you did you see the Zach Britton quote um, of him sort of essentially – I mean, I think he played himself out of the role, but he essentially took himself out of the closer role as well. Do you I, – I have I have mixed feelings about it, but what, what, what do you think? Like, do you have respect for someone who does that, or are you kind of like – like, who really cares? Like, you, were, you lost the role anyway. Like, I – here's – like, I always respect – like players being honest and taking responsibility, but at the same time, it's like you don't know if he's already hasn't had conversations with Boone that might lead him to believe he is like already gonna get taken out of the role. And like it's also so different. It's like we've seen every reliever in the Yankees bullpen this year have at least one really bad blown save. But like Jonathan Lewisaga is a rookie, or a young girl. rookie, but this is his first year as a high leverage reliever. He's making nothing. I have patience for that. Chad Green has been great for us for five years, and he still makes pretty much peanuts for how good a reliever he is. I have patience for that. Zach Britton is a veteran who we pay a lot of money to get out, and he can't do it. And it's like, for me, and I don't know how, if you feel the same way, I kind of agree. The home run Anderson obviously sucked. That kind of is what it is. Like that's that guy is one of the better players in baseball. You know, in, in a big moment, he makes a, a big play. Like that's like like I, I get it. My bigger problem is walking the nine hitter before the top of the lineup comes up. And like and it's like you can't you can't lose a guy you had 0-2 who's a nine hitter when you have Tim Anderson and potentially you know, Jose Abreu coming up after that. So it's like for me, he makes too much money for me to have any semblance of patience with him. Like even that last week, some people were like, Oh, well, he's still coming off the aisle. Like, no, he's been off the aisle for a while. Now he's been doing this for a long time. We pay him a lot of money. Just figure it the fuck out. It, it pisses me off when someone who's a ground ball pitcher like him, like who is not, not even like, Oh, like you could argue some other pitches in the Yankee bullpen are like ground ball guys. Like Zach Burton is like one of the most notorious ground ball guys. And you're giving up like opposite field home runs. Like that's, that's just like, yeah. where's your, like, it makes me think that his stuff is nowhere near where it's supposed to be. And it's not, it's yeah. not coming off the IL. It's not that it's like, no, his stuff isn't as good anymore. Cause things that didn't happen to him in the past are now happening to him. That's where I'm yeah. kind of like, like there, there might be a bigger problem. And that's where like going back to the, his quote of like, Oh, like, I don't think I like deserve to be in these high leverage situations, like, or whatever the exact quote was. It was, that was essentially a summary of it, but it's, it's, it kind of feels like a little bit of like that, the, the commercial we always make fun of, of the basketball player. He's like, no coach. I touched it, you yeah. know, like, and where it's like, like it went out of bounds. And it's like, great. That's how you, you have integrity for the game, all that shit. You're honest. You're a good teammate, all that stuff. But like, at the end of the day, like, I don't really care. Pitch mm -hmm. better. You know, I, I don't really care if you like, like the basketball kid, why would you say? Why would you say you touched the ball and when it went out of bounds? Like, don't you care right. about your team a little bit? Like, no, Zach Britton. How about instead of removing yourself from the role, how about you go get your sinker back? You know, like yeah. go make it go make it better and go out into that next high leverage situation and pitch better. Like, I I respect the fact that he's willing to almost take the hit a little bit and be like, yeah, this is on me. I'm not good right now. Like, there there is a high level of respect to that because I think a lot of guys that's tough for them to admit. But it's also like, don't just be like. I'm not good anymore. Sorry. That sucks. Like, no, yeah, like, no. like, no, it doesn't work like that. We're probably, I agree. We're probably get better, get better now. I, yeah, <laughs> I agree. And like I said, like, I like when guys take responsibility and blame, but I don't want to hear, yeah. Oh, I just don't deserve this. It's like, no, you got to say, 
I suck right now. I get paid a lot of money to do this. I'm not doing it. I'm going to figure it out and get better because it's not acceptable. Not like, oh, well, I told Boone I don't deserve. It's like, yeah, no fucking shit. Your ERA oh, no. told Boone that you don't deserve that. So it's just, it, it's whatever, man. It's a really frustrating scene. Like for me, like him and Chapman both just like, and just for me, it's like you can't throw strikes. Like when Chad Green gets touched up, it's because he gets hit hard with a home run. Like it's not. I'm not gonna try to say it's he's okay, but like pitcher and one of the, his best pitches is the fastball. You're it happens. Like he's yeah. you're a power pitcher that comes in late game situations to pitch to the middle of a lineup. It's gonna yeah. happen. Zach Britton walking the nine hitter should not happen. Like that just shouldn't happen. So like it's just I I've lost patience with him so quickly. He came in in the sixth inning tonight. So we'll. We'll see. I mean, realistically, he's a guy the Yankees need to get at least oh, yeah. somewhat right before uh, playoff time, if that is what they're going to do in October. So we'll, we'll fucking see. But right now, he's absolutely on my shit list. Oh, yeah. And he, he's, he hasn't done anything. I mean, even in his tenure as a Yankee, like he's, I was happy when they resigned him because I think he does have the ability to be successful. But it's not like he's been this otherworldly reliever in his time in New York. He's been good. Don't get me wrong up, mm-hmm. up, up until this season, obviously, but it's not like I've been like, I feel like Chad Green has done a lot more for us. Obviously he's been here longer, but I feel like he's done a lot more. And he, I, even I feel like Liz Loisig has done more for us. I mean, in, in this year alone, um, fucking yeah. one, yeah. has done no, more. Loisig has been incredible this year. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in terms of the rest of the series with the White Sox, what, what are your thoughts on that? What were you feeling? I mean, it was great. I mean, then on Saturday, like it it almost happens again. Well, it does happen again. And they, they end up getting the huge home run from Joey Gallo and extras. Uh, But like I said, I, I can live with a Chad green home run to Jose Abreu way more than I can live with what happened to Britain on Thursday. And then uh, on, on Sunday, we almost blow it again because instead of leaving in Loisaga, boom goes to, to Lucas Licky, which like, I didn't hate like with a four run lead, like it would kind of hurt to uh, use Loisga there and then potentially not have him available for the first day of the, the Red Sox series doubleheader. But like, man, like Lucas Licky, like you got to throw strikes. Like it's yeah. all these late like meltdowns all, all root from the relievers just putting guys on base unnecessarily at the beginning. So like, Thank, thank God they took two out of three. They tight roped their way into doing it, but it's it made it a lot easier to live with what happened on Thursday when you won the series on the road against the first place team in the White Sox. And and this is the I I I've seen a lot of people blame Boone, and this is where I I get a little mixed because it, it's hard to blame a coach for a pitcher's bad performance. And then we're just talking about the usage of the bullpen because at the end of the day. We know that that's mostly what Boone is responsible for as a manager. At the end of the day, the lineup is probably made by Cashman and the analytics team and all that stuff. So we have to look at what we can blame Boone for because if they're not winning, they got to blame for something. (laughs) Um, And it's tough to blame a manager for a pitcher's bad performance. But I will say if there's, if there is this consistent problem with pitchers coming in and not throwing strikes, like this has happened all year with the relievers all year. There's been a problem with them for the, for the most part, they were bullpen was really good in the beginning, but I mean, for a good stretch now, it's been just a consistent problem with the bullpen, just not being good. And the reason why I go back to boom is that is, is he's get, is he getting these guys up early enough? Is he giving mm-hmm. them enough time in the bullpen to work shit out? You know what I mean? Like there, there's, we know it. Pitchers don't have it every single day. And sometimes mm-hmm. when you don't, you need maybe what 10 extra pitches in the bullpen to find your release point, find your curveball, find your fastball, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe Boone's not giving them enough time with that. Maybe he's just being like, okay, let me press this button now. And he's not thinking about what the pitcher needs. Sometimes you need 10 extra pitches. Sometimes if you're ready, you feel like your first pitch is your best one. Like <laughs> Maybe you just want to stretch. Maybe you just want to throw a few more, a few more warmups and you're like, I'm good to go. Sometimes you don't need that extra time, but you should be giving that to them as a manager if they need it. You want your guys to come in and perform to the best of their capability. And sometimes if you, I I mean, I don't know. I I wish that was something that like they talked about a little bit more on the broadcast. I would love to know how soon Boone gets his guys up and how, you know, how the pitching coach, obviously they take it in the bullpen and how long it takes everyone to get ready. But I mean, maybe that's a factor is that Boone's not telling them soon enough when they're going in. Yeah. I mean, it's you're not wrong. I mean, maybe yesterday Lucas Licky, you know, has no well, maybe right, plan. Is Lewis going to close it out in a two run game? You know, boy hits the two run homer. You know, maybe he's not ready to to really go in. In which case, you have to pull him. He at least I'll, I'll give Boone that he's been a little bit better with pulling some of these relievers yeah. when they clearly don't have it, as opposed to leaving their out and out, leaving them out there to die like he was doing 
earlier in the season, but then you're in the same situation where you're pulling a guy who wasn't ready to go in for another guy who was probably right. even less ready to go in. So <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, it's a weird situation. It's a tricky one. I get the bullpen management is obviously the, I would say the most important part of being a manager between knowing, you know, in game, what buttons to push, keeping your guys fresh for, you know, Yankees about to have 12 games in 11 days. Um, but you're right. Then maybe something, on Aaron Boone's as it's going wrong because I, it's, it's remarkable how many games, not only games that they've blown, but games they've almost blown. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy because in the beginning of the season, we were talking about where is this Yankees offense? And now it kind of feels like it's coming together a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. You know, for the most part, like Luke Foy hits a big home run. Joey Gallo hits a big home run. Stanton hits a big home run. Judge hits a big home run. You know, like all these things, it's like, we're like, where is the offense? I feel like it's starting to come together. We're starting to hit the ball a little bit more. And now it's like, all right, what's the deal with the bullpen? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even the starting pitching other than Andrew Heaney, who doesn't fucking count. Yeah. He, he's, he's, Andrew Heaney is horrible. He's the worst How crazy is that, though? I mean, I, I losing Cole and Montgomery at the same time two weeks ago, you're like, how – is this going to work? Like how, cause Herman is, is still hurt. Severino might not pitch again this year. It sounds like he's not going to at this point. Yeah, and Kluber's Klu- right. still not back yet. So your rotation was essentially Jameson Tyone and question marks. Obviously Nestor Cortez stepped up in a big way. Luis Heel yeah. stepped up in a big way uh, for the rotation to not be the biggest problem throughout that is a a testament to them and also a big what the fuck to the bullpen. Because if you're getting solid starts from from Nestor and Heal and all these guys who are stepping up and you have a lead late, I don't care how bad the offense has been that day, you need to do your job and lock it down. Yeah, and it's like as much as I want to get mad at Lickie for being, you know, for being someone who almost blew that lead, should we really be relying on Lucas Lickie to close out games? Like, yes, it's once in a blue moon, but like that blue moon should never come. You know, yeah. like we, that we should that should never have to happen. He was somebody who barely made this team. He's yeah. been phenomenal this he's year. He's been a godsend, but yeah, phenomenal he's, for what yeah. for what that is. But like, if you're gonna be like, oh, Lucas Lickley has to close out that game. No, he doesn't. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> like, like, no, he really doesn't. He's your no, last guy. Right. Then he's supposed to get you like your. If a, someone has a bad start, he's supposed to get you from the third to the sixth and give up one run. You know, like yeah. that. He's your he's your bridge guy in a game you're probably gonna lose anyway. So like to rely on him and being like he needs to close out this game is just ridiculous. Um, and obviously would love yeah. it to happen, but like these other guys need to step up. Britain can't just be like, sorry, I'm not good anymore. No, you need to be yep. good again. That needs yep. to happen. So no, absolutely. Rant over, rant over about the bullpen. But at, at the end of the day, it is better that the offense is a little bit back on track. So I, in terms of as much as we want to rant about the bullpen, the offense has been good. The pitching, starting pitching has been good. And we're seven and three, our last 10, five and a half back in the division. Um, I mean, I, I said it a long time ago. I didn't think the division was even anywhere near reach. Um, it feels a little bit more manageable now. You know, we're mid-August, five and a half games is still a lot, but it's not it's not a no. Yeah, I mean, five and a half with six weeks to go. It's it, crazier things have happened. You wish you had more than three more games against Tampa uh, to make things happen. But um Listen, they've won 10 out of their last 11 series, and that's including missing guys. Like, you've missed Cole for a point. You missed Montgomery, Rizzo. You're missing Glaber. Gio hasn't played most of that time. You know, Judge sure. was down for part of that. Gary's been down. Chapman's been down. Like, literally, like, pretty much half or more of the impact players on this team have missed time, and you've won 10 out of 11 series against – I know people will point to the, the Kansas City series and the Baltimore series, but against some pretty good teams, you know, the White Sox, they won a Red Sox series. They won a Tampa Bay series in Tampa, Houston series in Houston. So the Yankees have been playing a very much better brand of baseball for really a month and a half now, pretty much ever since the Subway series. So uh, to, to see them doing that and playing themselves into the position they're in right now, it, it's good to see, but it's not going to mean anything unless they get some of these guys back and, and really make a push here in these final six weeks. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's, I think is a little concerning still is everyone's like, Oh, the Yankees are playing well, good again. Um, so like they're, they're going to make the playoffs. No, they're not. That's not a lock. Um, yeah. They dug themselves a major hole. They're still not necessarily a lock, lock to even make the wild card. Um, and anything can happen over the next month yeah. and a half. Teams are going to stay hot, and the Yankees have to stay hot. They have to keep. They have to keep up this brand of baseball. And that's not necessarily. I mean, we've seen it for. I mean, this could just be a stretch, um, yeah. a, good, a good stretch of baseball. So I mean, they got to keep up this pace. And you know, th- I think signs are pointing that they will. Um, but you know, I you got to wait and see what happens. Absolutely. Um, so I did want to. I wanted to play a game. Um, on this or a bit of to 
more of a guessing game, I guess. Um, so a lot of good stretches going on in baseball right now. So I want to ask you, Nick, we'll do it like rapid pace and then we'll kind of get into it a little bit more. I want to ask you good team or just good stretch. Okay. So I, I, I think this is a good game. Cause there's going to be some teams in here where you're like, like definitely good team. And then there's going to be somewhere you're like, I really don't know. It's a, it's a good question, Rob. I'm glad you asked it. So, right. <laughs> All right. So I'll start with the American league East and we'll work our way around. Okay. So this is teams that are on a very good stretch of baseball right now, specifically in their last 10 games. Rays, seven and three in their last 10. Good team, good stretch. I mean, they're a good team. They've had – it's not so much the seven and three stretch. It's just the fact of what they've done throughout this year. I'm still waiting for them to come back down to earth a little bit more, especially without glass now. But, I mean, they're just a team that I just have to, like, stop doubting. They just find ways to win. So as, as much as I, like, hate them and don't understand them and never will, they're a good team. Good. Good answer. Yankees, good team, good stretch. Again, I think good team. I think that I think that they're too talented to have been on the stretch they were at the beginning of the season. I, again, I don't know if it's a, a lock for the playoffs with how bad they were early. I, I really do think that that they're a good team, a good baseball team. Detroit Tigers, good team, good stretch. Good stretch. That's not that's not a good team. I the future is brighter in Detroit than people will give them credit for, especially you look at that division. Uh, the Indians are trending downward. Obviously, you know, the White Sox are good. Um, the Royals have some young talent too. I think they'll, they'll kind of arrive in the next couple of years. Uh, the Detroit Tigers have, have some good young talent and a lot of other guys in the wings that we haven't even seen yet, but I, they're not a good team just yet. Although they have had a nice second half. Good stretch. Good stretch. Uh, Minnesota twins, seven and three in their last 10. Good team. Good stretch. Good stretch. The twins are not good. The twins, the twins were merchants. The twins were merchants of the AL Central all year. And I gotta give you this. You've been on their under uh for you know since the preseason now, since we did our countdown to baseball back in March. So yeah, no, they're they are not a good team. They traded Jose Barrios and Nelson Cruz at the deadline. It's it's a good they have. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. And it, wait for this. He's he's gonna come up in this. Um uh, uh they're five and five, I won't say that. Uh, Oakland Athletics, good team, good stretch. Eight and two of their last 10. Well, again, good team. They're another team where, you know, it may not always make sense roster wise. Like you don't look at them in April and they're not going to blow you away. They've got talent. They've been playing well. Uh, Starling Marte has been a nice ad for them. So I, they're, they're a good team. They're going to be tough. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be tough for the Yankees. You, you look at the AL wildcard situation. Uh, it's the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Blue Jays, and the A's. Two of those teams are not going to be in that wild card game. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough. The Yankees go out there in a couple of weeks, and that'll be interesting. But no, the A's are a good team. Stalin Marte has been unbelievable there too. He was like three oh eight when he went over there. I think something like that. He's at like three thirty now. It's he's, he's, he's he's literally playing well. better than he was before. Really, this one this one is the question. I think the hardest one. Braves eight and two in their last ten. Good team, good stretch. I'm, I'm going to go good stretch. I was so high on the Braves coming into this year. Like people forget, like this is a team of game away from the world series. They were uh, my dark horse to, to win the world series, or at least the pennant coming into this year. But when you look at what happened to that roster, I mean, Marcelo Zuna, that's a big bat that's gone from their lineup. You know, Mike Soroka was a guy I was counting on coming back for them. Uh, he's obviously done for the year. Ronald Cunha Jr. is done for the year. So Yes, there's still talent there, and yes, they've been playing a better brand of baseball, but in that division, the year they've had and the guys that they're missing and aren't coming back, it's it's a good stretch. So it's not a good team. I, I kind of agree with you. And Freddie Freeman, he's, he was cold in his last couple of games, um, like over the last like five or six games. I think he was like one for 21, but before that, he was like literally on fire. Like his, he's, he was in the low 200s. Now he's back in like, I think he's like 289. As of today, like just unbelievable, like a, a crazy stretch. He's back as one of the first best first basemen in baseball. So mm -hmm. he's that that's going to have to cool down. He's been literally unbelievable. So is Austin Riley, Dansby Swanson. They've all been playing a little bit above what I think they really are. So I'm I'm with you. Good stretch on that. I do think the Mets come back and start to perform a little bit better. And next one, Philly, six and four in their last ten. Good team. Good stretch. Can I say like just like expected? Like I think this is what like like I think this is what I expected out of the Phillies coming into this year. Like I had them as my third place team. I thought the the Braves, like I said, were going to be a lot better, and I thought the Mets were going to be a lot better, and those would be the two teams kind of duking it out for the division. And you would get a, a mid to high eighties win total. 
from the Phillies. Like I saw some of Yankees Twitter after the Phillies overtook the Mets uh, for first in the NL East being like, Oh, I can't believe we let Joe Girardi go. It's like, this is a very mediocre Phillies team and they have Zach Wheeler pitching to a Cy Young level, Bryce Harper playing to an MVP level. Like that they're solid. They're definitely not bad at no point this year. I think the Phillies are bad, but like, they're in first place because they're in the worst division in baseball. So, and the Braves and Mets have both massively underperformed. So it, I, I think at this point, they're probably my pick to win the division. Do I think they're a good team? No, I think they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Braves actually sitting in first place as of this moment, okay. but the I, okay. Phillies, are, Phillies are one game back. They've been going back and forth literally like for the past like week and right. now, now right. the Mets right. are two and a half back. Um, good team, good stretch. The Milwaukee Brewers seven and three in their last 10. Good team. I think, I think, listen, the offense obviously leaves a lot more to be desired. Uh, it's a down year for Christian Yelich for sure. Uh, you know, that lineup, it, it's nothing crazy, but when you have a starting staff of Brandon Woodruff, Corbin Burns and Freddie Peralta and the things those three guys are doing this year, that, that's a good team. You know, 60% of your games, you're throwing out an absolute stud on the mound. It's, it's a good team. I can't say that they're not. Yeah. Plus for the playoffs, you're going to have Hader and Devin Williams in that bullpen. Like it, well, if you could throw all those guys for two innings each, like you'd have one, fine, throw Hater for one inning, save him, <laughs> like you'll be fine. Yeah. Like if, if they wanted to do like a like a bullpen game in a way for a play, for like a wild card game, if that's what it comes down to, even though it seems like they're going to win their division, um, they they would they would not. I don't know. I think they throw a combined no hitter. <laughs> You're back into. I I got to see how the schedule shakes out, but I know. Last year was tough because the division series, and I don't remember about the championship series, was five games in five days, like no off days, just because of how it worked out with COVID and all the neutral sites, the wild card round and everything. Theoretically now, if you're back to the original schedule, you could throw nobody besides Woodruff, Burns, Peralta, Devin Williams, and Josh Hader in a five-game series. That's that's pretty fucking tough to beat. I don't care who you are. Yeah, yeah, you could find a way to – I'm sure they could find a way to work that out with maybe one guy – one other guy in their bullpen who I'm sure is just nasty, whoever they decide to throw out there. <laughs> Especially considering there's going to be like a, I think it's pretty much like a mathematical foregone conclusion that they'll be playing the NL East winner in the division series. So either, either the Mets, Braves, or Phillies going up against those guys, you, you got to like your chances if you're the Brewers. Yeah. Um, good team, good stretch, the Cincinnati Reds. Good stretch. I, I've been off the Reds train all year. I know they – I love Nick Castellanos. I love Jesse Winker. Like they, you know, Jonathan India, they've got some exciting guys, but I just don't think there's enough talent there to warrant them really doing anything. Like even beating out the Brewers. I, how, how many games back are they right eight. now? They're eight. Yeah, it's like, you know, it, it's the, it's the Brewers. They would have to blow it. They would have to blow it. Yeah, listen, it's a, it's, it's a good stretch. They're not a good team. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're the team, like, they're like an NFL team with like a bunch of fun skill players, you know what I mean? But they're not yeah. actually good. You know, listen. If they were in the if they were in the NL East, I would love to see how they would fare. They could probably win that division, right? Would, <laughs> would they? Yeah, I want to try that. They, would their record have them in first in the NL East right now? What What are they compared the to? NL the NL East or the AL East? The NL East. Uh, so they're sixty four and fifty five. The Braves in first place are sixty two and fifty six. So maybe yeah, two games. Maybe, up in the maybe East. two games ahead in the East. Obviously, yeah. you can't always. It's you know you can't just plug. Not it right the and theoretically, they would be. So here's another team who would be uh, one. Uh, no, they, they'd be ahead of the Phillies because they're um, one ahead in the loss column, technically. The St. Louis Cardinals, eight and two in their last 10. 10 games out of the division, but maybe they make a run. Uh, I'm probably not going to make a run at the wild card, but eight and two in the last 10. Can, uh, good team or good stretch? I got to say good stretch. They they were my uh, preseason division pick. I don't I don't know if I picked them or the Brewers. I kept flip-flopping back and forth. I think you finally division. went with the Brewers because I think Ethan convinced you to go to the Brewers. <laughs> I think I think you might be right, actually. Regardless, I, regardless, I thought this division was going to be a dogfight. I'm sure that's probably what I said. Uh, it has not been. Uh, they just got Jack Flaherty back. He's been out for a while. So that's obviously a huge ad for them. Uh, I'm going to go with two reasons. I can't say they're a good team. One, the fact they play themselves into that big of a hole in an NL center, which really has not been good yeah. at all this year. Um, I, I don't think they're a good team. And two, they traded for Jay Happ to like try and win games. This is has where he been good? <laughs> he's been really good. He's two and one with a one, four, three ERA in 16 innings. Nothing. 
incredibly small sample size. He had a, almost a seven ERA in Minnesota, but J.A. Happ might be the guy that St. Louis needs to make a division push 10 games out. He's going to be like their CC Sabathia. <laughs> I'm not taking this seriously. I'm not addressing that. It's a joke. It's an, it's, it's, it's yeah. the biggest joke. Jay Happ. Even will, the fact that, that that those are his numbers through three starts pisses me off. That really yeah, he, me. yeah. It should be like an 11 ERA. It's ridiculous yeah. that he's playing well and it's insulting oh, to the rest of baseball. Horrible. Moving on. <laughs> um, I mean, we're pretty sure about these, but, Giants and Dodgers both eight and two in their last 10. Good team, good stretch. I can't – I the San Francisco Giants, man, it it makes no sense. Like, they are – It the does. Like, I, I've watched enough of them where, like, I'm, I'm convinced it's a good team. But it's just, like, what those guys are doing, man. All those guys having career years. Like, like the Dodgers are a really good team. The Padres are a really good team. And they're 10 games up on the Padres. Like, it's crazy. They are – yeah, 10 games. I'm trying to see if the, the Padres are still obviously after the Dodgers, they still had the second wild card spot pretty pretty handedly above the Reds. I think they're about three games. No, uh, I never the lost column always confuses me because everyone has a different amount of games played. It's not the NFL. Mm-hmm. But I mean they're they're like I think they're like two and a half up in the wild card, the Padres over the Reds as for the mm-hmm. second spot. But like the Giants have run like sort of running away with the division. They're four games up on the Dodgers, too. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a pretty crazy. handed lead. That's not nothing. Like two, I think like two and less is two games and less, like one or two or zero or 0.5, whatever it is, is like, all right, you don't have much of a lead. You're kind of just like, you know, you, it, it's something you got to keep, but like anything past that is kind of like you, one of these teams has to go on a bad stretch. The other team has to go on a good stretch in order to, for things to switch over four games is kind of right in that middle area. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. they they have a good division lead over the, Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres, who everyone thought were the two best teams in baseball by far. No, it's crazy. It's it's absolutely stunning what they've done this year. No, um, it's uh, that was a good team, good stretch, sponsored by absolutely nobody. Uh, <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know. It, it's it. This has been, I think, one of the parts of the year where people are really starting to. I, I this this is I did that because this is like the stretch like I haven't seen a stretch where there's this many teams doing that well over like that many times. Usually it's like two or three teams that are like on like an eight and two run, but like there's there's a lot of teams right now that are playing good baseball. And then let's not forget a uh, bad team, bad stretch, of course, sponsored by nobody. Uh, the Pirates one and nine, <laughs> uh, awful team. Bad. Cubs zero oh and ten. Bad. Nationals one and nine in the last bad. ten. Uh, Orioles over oh, the last ten. Royals three for their last seven, bad. Rangers three for their last seven. Bad. All bad, bad team, bad stretch. I would say, and then I, I know they're only five and five, but they've been a hot topic of conversation. I'll just say it: Boston Red Sox, bad stretch, not bad team. I think especially Chris Sale came back; he looked good. Granted, because the Orioles, his stuff looked good. Kyle Schwarber, big addition for that lineup. Uh, it's going to be crazy, uh, you know, the AL East slash AL Wild Card race these past couple of weeks here. So I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people, uh, both Yankee fans and pessimistic Red Sox fans, want to bury the Red Sox completely because they've had uh, somewhat of a poor stretch over the past couple of weeks. I think that's all it is, a bad stretch. I don't think they're a bad team. Do I think they're as good as they played the first half of the season and some of this is a little bit of regression to the mean? Absolutely. But do I still think they're a good baseball team? Yes, they're a good baseball team. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we we could preach as much as we did about the Yankees like we were the whole season we were like we were a little upset with them but I think we were always in the back of our heads confident that they would find some sort of good stretch in them um yes. I don't think that we can be the the Red Sox have been good for so long in the season the second they have a bad stretch we just can just write them off as a bad team you yeah. know like if, if you're gonna say the Yankees had this bad first half of the season and you can and we can still confidently say like okay they have a good team in them the Red Sox have a bad what 15, 20 games, give or take. Um, we can't just write them off as a bad team just because we thought what they were going to be at the beginning of the year. We thought yeah. the Giants were going to be a very average team. They are literally the best team in baseball by about four games. Yeah. So, I mean, I, the Red Sox are a good team. They, I mean, they're better than the Yankees. It's evident uh, two and a half games above them right now. Um, so I, I, I'm not writing them off in any way. Uh, I still think they're a better team than the Yankees right now. Look, it's a cliche, but you say that's why you play 162. It gives the Yankees a chance to make up for, you know, the hole that they dug themselves. It gives, you know, the Red Sox a chance to make up for, you know, this ground they're losing right now. 
Um, and you know, it takes it, you know, a team like the giants where people have been doubting them for all, you know, all year, if you could do it throughout 162, then you're legitimate. So we'll see. How mad do you think the Dodgers are going to be if they don't win? Because they are like millions and millions and millions of dollars over the luxury tax. Dude, I, <laughs> you have to I be know mad, like, right? <laughs> where your head's at if you're a Dodgers fan, just because like, yes, you won last year and I'm not one of the people trying to devalue it just because it was a short season like totally get that those playoffs were a grind like there was an extra round the division series was five games in five days you know they had to come back from 3-1 against the Braves play play a a good and hot raised team uh but like if you're a Dodgers fan and you're thinking like okay I saw my team like win it on TV in a year where I didn't go to any games and the playoffs were at a neutral site but like you add Trevor Bauer obviously that went south you add Max Scherz you add Trey Turner like you got to be feeling pressure that you really hope they win it again to kind of validate last year. No. I mean, I mean, obviously. Yeah. I mean, like you kind of have to, it's, it feels like greedy as a fan, you know, to be like, Oh, give me two world series championships, make them back to back too. Yeah. But you kind of have to, you kind of want it, especially after a year like that, where it's like, it didn't feel like it counted as much or it didn't feel as exciting. You're like, wait, no, give me my world series that, you know, I want like, like you, we were talking about a couple weeks ago, we want the parade, you know, yeah. we want to celebrate the championship of the New York Yankees and you know, the Dodgers couldn't really do that. You know, they didn't have the parade. They didn't have the celebration. I mean, I don't think it's the Dodgers. They're not, I mean, it's a bunch of celebrities who are their fans. I don't think they're as loyal as the people of New York, um, but still there's, there's diehard Dodgers fans, obviously. And, you know, they, they want, they want that moment. And if they, you can't even be mad at the Dodgers. They clearly went for it. They have their millions of dollars. They, they went over the luxury tax and then they paid Justin Turner to continue going over the luxury tax. And now they have Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. So they're blowing by it. They're doing everything they can. You can't even be mad at like the front office. You just had to be mad at the San Francisco Giants, I guess. <laughs> yeah, of course. And look, again, I'm not trying to devalue 2020, but like, I don't know if you felt the same way. Like it just wasn't the same level of emotional attachment like 2019 like going to games all summer long went to a couple of playoff games like I was fucking crushed when that Yankee team lost and yeah I get I get it they lost later on in the playoffs and they were a better team than the 2020 Yankees but like for as upset as I was in the moment when the Yankees lost to the Rays last year I got over it a lot quicker because it was kind of like this like I watched that team play like not even 70 total games I was in person for none of them it was kind of just like it kind of just happened and went away like it wasn't the same kind of emotional attachment that you usually get from living and dying through 162 games plus a full playoffs i was gonna say it, it felt very detached watching it obviously because that's how life was then it, yeah. no not not the fault of anybody but it was just like it, it, it just didn't feel as uh didn't feel as special and no you know, not at all not at all and like we always say we want the parade yeah I we, we want the, we want the parade cashman boone uh zach Britton. Everyone who seems to be actively working against New York Yankees. <laughs> I just want to pray like before I have kids and like real responsibilities. That's my only, that's my only requirement. I'll be okay. As long as just give me one. One prayed. Literally asking for just one. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have anything else? How are the cats? They're good, actually. Uh, Farley, which is the son, doing pretty well. Uh, the blind mom still, uh, still a little shy. But she's coming out. She's make, making her way around town. So uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. They're good cats. They're good cats. 